now we're on C5. C5 has a lot of rounded edges. So the basting for this basically is what I do on these outside corners. would so be this pie piece for the outside corner. I'm going to use a gathering stitch and then come back with the same thread <clears throat> and thread baste it tight against this curve. I have a basting video that you can check out that will explain it in more detail. For the inside curve, so this part of that piece, I will put a small notch almost to the paper and that way I can fold it over nice and tight without, I think there's only, you only need two for this, maybe one, but I think two to be safe. You don't need to put a ton of them. I will put blown about right here and about right here. And then on these pieces, you got both. You're gonna have to notch this side and then gathering stitch this side. So, um, and you can see it's every other color or every other piece is a different color. Here's my pieces. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble the circle first. And what I, how I do that is I do it in pairs. So I will baste, probably baste them all. I will do all these, the straight edges with glue basting. The trick to the center of this, if you're gonna start, and I tend to do it this way, I do this one first and then this one and then I do my gathering stitch once that's done. I say that because if you do the right hand and the left hand on this one, you need to do every one of these in the same order because if you do that, you'll have a lovely pinwheel effect in the corner or in the center, excuse me, and uh, it'll lay a lot flatter when you go to quilt it. So we can maneuver that, but only if the tags are spinning and that only way to get that is if you do each the exact same way. So for me, it's gonna be right and then left, right, left, right, left. And then I'll come through and get, sound like I'm marching. <laughs> um, I'll come through and do my gathering stitch on the curves. So I'll let me get started basting these. I'm gonna assemble these in pairs and then assemble the pairs into half and then put the half together, but we'll get to that. So I've basted all of my center pie pieces and as you can see I've done the basting all the same way so they're going to pinwheel nicely. So next thing to do is to sew them into pairs. So I've got all of my center pie pieces paired up so now I'm going to go ahead and put them together. So I've got this into hemispheres and you can see how the pinwheel effect is starting to go. One thing I wanted to point out is when you stitch these together, you want to make sure that you have this in a nice straight line and that these points come together exactly where they need to because then when you put this together here, you'll have a nice line. And if you see this is going to nest right like that and that also helps get your center that your center is going to be able to get better. I got to line it up and stitch it right obviously. But um, We'll get, let's get this circle together. So I've assembled my circle, and as you notice, you got the pinwheel effect in the center here. On the other side, it's not exactly lined up. Um, that's because of the pinwheel effect, and if I can try to get it there, but once the papers come out, it'll settle in. Um, but that's the best I could get it, and still have it be straight on the edges, so have to live with that. So all right, so the next thing is to pair these up. So I'm going to baste, glue base this straight edge. I'm going to glue base this inside curve with a with a notch or two cut out of it. You're going to cut the paper to just before the, the excuse me, cut the fabric to just before the paper. And then I'm going to come back and then do a gathering stitch basting on these. So and then this one, I'm going to glue base the straight edges and notch this twice the same way for this inside curve and then glue base that down. And then I'm going to pair all of these up to have these pie pieces on the outside. So I've got my pieces basted. I would use two notches here on this inside curve, one notch here on this inside curve. And I've put two of these together because they didn't quite match up right. 
So this one, this one here, I line this up. Nope, that's not the right one. Yeah, this one. This one, I line this up here and then I stitched around. But I ended up with this tail over here and I'm assuming that it's gonna work itself into this seam because of the fabric thickness. There's, I glue basted this edge, which then put glue on this tag so it was good. it's a little bit more rigid than normal and same here I may have pulled too tight on this with this other one I tried to line this up here stitch to here come back this way and then work my way in to see if it helped at all and it didn't and actually I pushed it so far this when I pushed it it pushed it a little bit off the point I can compensate with that when I stitch this together but I'm gonna go ahead and put these other two together and then we can worry about these issues when we base these to get the rest of it together. So I finished attaching these pieces together and now I basted one of these. So I wanna make sure that I can baste it with this one last so that the tag lines up here because it won't clash, but instead I wanted to make it nest so I won't have as many going on to my uh, sashing when the block is completed. So I went ahead and notched this one side for the inside curve. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to connect these by the corners. So I'm gonna, this seam here, this seam, this seam. So that's how I'm gonna pair them up. You could pair them up the other way, but I'm gonna do it that way. So I'm gonna base the rest of them and connect them up. So I've got my corner pieces paired. I've got to remove my basting, but I'm gonna do that once I attach it to the circle. So the next thing is to attach it to the circle, obviously, and it's gonna be opposite colors. It's not gonna be this, although that would be kind of fun, but we're gonna do this. So yellow on black, black on yellow. I'm gonna make sure that these intersection here on the straight line, and then I can maneuver this for this point issue hopefully we can get that taken care of but I'm gonna attach one at a time and then I'll go in order one way or the other so I've got my first corner attached and I'm going to attach the second one and I was worried about this so this piece here does fit on the pie piece this piece is a little skewed but when I do go to stitch this, if I line up this top area, line that up, and then start stitching from there and stitch down, it'll all go back to get, it'll all lay together good. So even if there is a little puckering here, that will go away once the papers are removed and it'll all settle in for quilting. So I'm gonna keep going around and get these attached. So I've attached all four of my corners. There's a little bit of a dimensionality here, which is normal because forcing these edges into submission is gonna create some dimensionality other places, but that will go away once I remove the papers after I put it in the row. Um, so the last thing to do is to remove my gathering stitches. And what I do is I snip, I, put, I keep all the knots on the top for this reason right here. I, I will snip off the knots and pull this one out and in theory when I pull these I should be able to pull out the rest of it so I'm going to do that now. So I've removed all of my gathering stitch basting and now my C5 block has been completed.